This is going to be a brief introduction to the Gospel of John. John's Gospel is noticeably different from the other three Gospels. John's Gospel is unique. We're going to spend a few minutes noting some of the distinctions between John's Gospel and the Synoptics, and then we'll note some particular points of interest in John's Gospel. Since the late 1700s, Matthew, Mark, and Luke have been called the Synoptics, or the Synoptic Gospels. The meaning of synoptic in this context is presenting the same view or taking the same view. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are so similar in structure, content, and wording that they can easily be set side by side to provide a synoptic comparison of their content. These three Gospels cover many of the same accounts and the same teachings. To be more specific, 58% of Matthew is in common with Mark and Luke. 93% of Mark is in common with Matthew and Luke, and 41% of Luke is in common with Matthew and Mark. However, only 8% of the Gospel of John overlaps, repeats, or parallels the sayings, the teachings, and the events that are mentioned within the other three Gospels. John fills in the gaps the Synoptic Gospels leave out. Matthew, Mark, and Luke focus on Jesus' work in Galilee. The Gospel of John focuses on Jesus' work in Judea. The synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, parallel each other in outlining the chronological details of Jesus' life. John deals more with the doctrinal question of who Jesus is. The synoptics begin either with Jesus' birth or the events just prior to his birth, or in the case of Mark, his gospel begins with Jesus' baptism by John the baptizer. But John's gospel begins from the beginning. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Parables are prominent in the teaching of Jesus and the Synoptics. Matthew records 22 or 23. Mark records somewhere between 5 and 10, depending on who you ask and how you count them. Luke records something like 23 to 26, again, depending on who you ask. John's Gospel has no parables. There are nearly 20 miracles recorded in each of the three synoptics. John records only seven miracles. I'm trying to catch up here on my PowerPoint. Let me say that again. There are nearly 20 miracles recorded in each of the three synoptics. But John records only seven miracles, and five of those are not found in the other Gospels. He changes water to wine in chapter 2. He heals the nobleman's son in chapter 4. He heals the invalid at the pool of Bethesda in chapter 5. He feeds the 5,000 in chapter 6. He walks on the water in chapter 6. He heals the blind man in chapter 9. And he raises Lazarus from the dead in chapter 11. The synoptics mention only one Passover, whereas John's gospel mentions three or possibly four Passovers. Matthew seems to have written primarily to convince the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. Matthew emphasizes Old Testament prophecies which were fulfilled by the teaching and the works of Jesus. Mark's gospel is understood to have been written for Romans, Romans who would have been more concerned about what Jesus did. Nineteen miracles are recorded in the gospel of Mark. Luke presents the most chronological and orderly account of the life of Christ, and Luke's intended audience seems to have been Greeks. For example, Luke Luke traces his genealogy, or Christ's genealogy, I should say, back to Adam, whereas Matthew traces Jesus' genealogy only back to Abraham. Luke includes everyone, not just Jews. John's targeted audience, however, is in fact everyone. Several other distinctions could be pointed out, but this is enough to show that John's Gospel is clearly unique from the other three. The Gospel of John clearly sets forth the claim that Jesus is the Son of God. The Gospel opens up with this claim in chapter 1 and verse 4, also in verse, chapter 1, verse 1, and also verse 14. 
Verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In John chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, we read, Because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. Jesus had just healed a, a man on the Sabbath at the pool of Bethesda. Verse 17 says, In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at work at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him, not only because he was breaking the Sabbath, but, but because, but rather he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. In John 8, verses 56 through 58, Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. They said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Then we have his, this exchange in chapter 10, verses 30 through 33. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Along with Jesus' claims of deity, John's gospel is known for the seven I am statements of Jesus. In chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In chapter 8, verse 12 and 9, 5, he says, I am the light of the world. In chapter 10, verses 7 and 9, he says, I am the door of the sheepfold. In chapter 10, verses 11 and 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. In chapter 11, verse 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. In chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Chapter 15, in verse 1, he says, I am the true vine. There are three key words found in the Gospel of John, three particular ones I want to focus on. They are belief, light, and life. I'm going to read a portion of John chapter 3 where all of all three of these words are used. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21, and then verse 36. Beginning in verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. John the baptizer teaches his disciples about Jesus in the latter part of chapter 3. He ends with this statement in verse 36. He says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. <clears throat> in John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, John tells us the purpose of his gospel. Reading from the New International Version, he says, We're told, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. There's a footnote in the NIV which, at, on verse 31, which says that uh, another possible reading is, These things are written that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John's purpose in writing his gospel was to create faith in Jesus so that we might have life 
in his name. <clears throat> Next week's class, lesson one, we will cover the prologue, chapter one, verses one through 18 in your material, the period of consideration, the A section of the period of consideration. And that section is the testimony of John's witness, which is chapter one, verses 19 through 51. So we're going to cover the class material in all of chapter one. <clears throat>